Yes, yes, welcome to your Manchester City Daily Roundup, a short video where I compile all of the stories from the last 24 hours. If you like these style of videos, please do me a favour, smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Five stories I'm going to tell you about today that occurred over the last 24 hours. I want you to leave all of your thoughts down below in the comments on each and every single one. Let's get right into it. The first story is, of course, the Club World Cup draw, the Saudi Arabia tournament, which Manchester City will be taking part in in December, between December 12th and December 22nd for the very first time in the club's history. The draw took place yesterday and City discovered their opponents. Two clubs we have never faced before. The first is Arawa Reds from Japan and Club Leon from Mexico. City will play the winners of those two teams in the semi-final of the tournament. I believe as the winners of the Champions League, you go straight into the semi-finals of the Club World Cup. So we will face either Arawa Reds from Japan or Club Leon from Mexico. Two clubs I don't know very much about, but as it is our first First time in the tournament. It's a brand new experience for Manchester City, a new trophy to win. And hopefully if we win it, we can get one of those nice little gold badges in the middle of your shirt. But a new tournament will provide obviously new problems, a new experience in the middle of the Premier League season. I believe the only fixture in the Premier League the Club World Cup will impact is our fixture against Brentford around that period in December. So that Brentford game will get postponed to a later date while City travel to Saudi Arabia to attempt to win the Club World Cup for the first time. I think it's exciting. I find it very interesting when you're facing clubs you've never played before, especially in competitive games and not pre-season. So it's definitely something for us to look forward to. I'm sure those who are traveling will find going to Saudi Arabia as a brand new experience and something to enjoy outside of European football. The second story is Calvin Phillips. There's news on Calvin Phillips and sort of the interest around him in the transfer window just gone and his plans over the next 12 months. Now, Calvin Phillips did make a cameo against Fulham on the weekend. In my opinion, I thought he was half decent. Obviously, not too many minutes, but he played quite well when he came on. He decided to stay this summer at Manchester City and fight for his place in the squad. There was speculation as to whether City were open to letting him go. A lot of us felt City were open to letting him go on the basis that Pep doesn't see much game time for him, but Calvin himself decided to stay at the club and wants to fight for his place. He's determined to get a place at Manchester City. He was getting interest from multiple clubs throughout the summer. The latest ones named are Everton and Newcastle. Obviously, two clubs at very different levels levels right now. Everton, you would imagine, will be fighting relegation. Newcastle, a club, even though they've started off very poorly in the Premier League this season, they are very much on the up with the financial backing they have behind them. So Newcastle, I would have viewed as a pretty decent move for Calvin Phillips. But as I said, he decided to stay in Manchester City. He's determined to fight for his place. But the word is, the latest is, if Calvin Phillips does not get any meaningful game time, suggesting he wants to play regularly or at least semi-regularly, and between now and January, he will push for a loan move. Callum Phillips is obviously in desperate need of football with the Euros on the horizon for England. He feels if he doesn't get meaningful football, he won't get into Garrett Southgate's England European Championships squad, which I think is fair enough. So it's up to Pep, it's up to Calvin how much football he plays, but where would he go on loan in January? I think going on loan in January is very different to getting a move in the summer just gone. Who is going to come and take Calvin Phillips in January? And where would be a good challenge for him to play regularly and try and get himself into that European Championship squad? I think it's very up in the air, especially since we've just signed Mateus Nunes, who can play as a deeper lying midfielder. I personally feel... Mateus Nunes was brought in to be as a backup to Rodri, as well as being a number eight. Then, of course, you have Mateo Kovacic, who does play as an eight, but we've seen in preseason can play as a number six as well, who can give Rodri some respite. So regular football, I, I struggle to see where it comes from for Calvin Phillips right now. As it stands, I would imagine if he wants that spot in the Euro squad, a move in January, a lone move in January might be best for Calvin Phillips, because like I said, it's very tough to see where he's going to get regular football from. So keep an eye on that one. I suppose, and monitor how much game time he gets between now and January. The next story is, it's a bit more of a paper talk one, but it is a hot topic right now, and that is Evan Ferguson, the 18-year-old Irish striker playing for Brighton right now, catching all the headlines following his hat-trick he scored on the weekend against Newcastle. Evan Ferguson apparently is being monitored by Manchester City, amongst a number of other Premier League clubs. Is Evan Ferguson someone you would like to see at Manchester City? Now, bear in mind, of course, we do already have Erling Haaland, we 
We have Julian Alvarez. Is there room for Evan Ferguson? I'm not so sure. How much would he cost? I think he would cost a pretty penny, Evan Ferguson, giving a mind his stocks are so high. So if he continues to have a, a very good season, which he started off very well, wherever he goes next summer, if he goes next summer, I would imagine you're, you're looking for a pretty high fee if you are um, Tony Bloom at Brighton. So it's one to keep an eye on, but in my opinion, it more than likely won't happen. It's just something that has been rumored on um, kind of amongst the journalists and, and papers on, on Twitter. So keep an eye on that one, Evan Ferguson to Manchester City. Is that something you would like to see? Evan Ferguson and Erling Hallam, two absolute monsters. What a spectacle that would be. The next story is kind of the biggest one of the roundup, and that is... Could Pep Guardiola manage the England national team? England are expecting or anticipating that Gareth Southgate will step down from his role as the England manager after the upcoming European Championships, and they are already planning for who they would like to bring in to replace him. The word is that their dream replacement would be Pep Guardiola. Could you guys see Pep Guardiola managing the England national team. Would that mean he does it alongside his duties as the Manchester City manager? I'm not sure. Now, we know Pep's contract expires in 2025, and Manchester City are always very relaxed about Pep Guardiola's contract situation. They're more than happy to allow Pep as much time as he wants to decide what he wants to do with his future. And I think that's the best thing to do when you have a manager as good as Pep, who's an, as important as Pep, to our club and our successes, you have to allow him whatever he needs, whatever time he needs to decide whatever it is he wants to do. My own personal opinion, for whatever it means, I believe he'll sign an extension to Manchester City. So if he was to take the England job, which in my own opinion, once again, I don't think he will, I can't see it happening. He would have to do it alongside being the Manchester City manager. Um, we also know Pep has never managed at international level. He got approaches from Spain and Brazil in the last sort of 12 months. Is international football something Pep would like to conquer? He's obviously completed everything he can in the game at club level with a multitude of clubs. Would it be something Pep would be interested in? Trying to win the Euros, trying to win the World Cup. If Pep was to lead England to a World Cup or a Euros, would that make Pep the greatest manager of all time considering everything he has already achieved at club level? I'm not sure I'd want to see it just because I'm a biased Manchester City fan. Obviously, I want him to stay as long as possible at City. But England definitely have aspirations of approaching Pep in the next 12 months or so about trying to make him their next manager. What a successor to Southgate that would be. I think the England fans, uh, more so than the City fans, would love to see this one happen. So keep an eye on that. Pep to England, is it something that could actually happen? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. The last and final story is about the big man, the hat-trick hero on the weekend, Erling Haaland. City have set down their valuation as to what they believe Erling Haaland is valued at, and that figure is £300 million. What do you guys think about this? £300 million. Is that a fair valuation for Erling Haaland? Now, bear in mind, you have to compare and contrast this with other transfers. Al Itihad have just bid, supposedly, £220 million for Mo Salah. Does that mean Erling Haaland is in and around the £300 million mark? In my opinion, he's simply priceless. I don't think he's a player that if any figure came knocking on our door, any club came knocking on our door with an extortionate figure, City should not say yes. I don't think there's any figure that City should accept for Erling Haaland. I think he's too important, he's too unique, and he's irreplaceable. There's no obvious player out there you can say, there's our Erling Haaland replacement, there's where you spend your 300 million. Because even if you get the 300 million, who do you go for? Who do you go for? I'm not so sure. But to add on top of the story, the word is that City, even though they value him at 300 million pounds, they do plan on pursuing the, the chase of getting Erling Haaland an extension on his contract and making him the most highest paid player, I should say, in the Premier League currently at around £600,000 a week. Now, obviously, that sounds like an extortionate number in comparison to our, our current wage structure, but you have to weigh up what Erling Haaland is doing for the team right now and what he's done over the last 12 months and how crucial he was to us winning our first Champions League, our third Premier League in a row, and of course the elusive treble, the historic treble. So is Erling Haaland worth these wages? In my opinion, yes, absolutely. Is he worth 300 million? No, he's priceless in my opinion. But you guys can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And that is your daily roundup for today. If you like these shorter videos where I compile the best stories of the last 24 hours, please, like I said, leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit. <laughs>